this would be bear hawk report number one my name is daniel my wife jill and the wonder dog who's not helping with anything there are thunderstorms and uh, so this is part of our vlog on building our bear hawk model b4 place we have b number 29 frame number 29 if i've got it right um and we're going to put up some check-ins from time to time uh, i'm going to try not to echo there are a bunch of really good bear hawk vlogs that we've been following including Colby on his five place and I can't remember the gentleman in New Zealand and Ken F. Uh, but uh, we'll keep up people up to date on our progress. And if we find anything interesting or find a different way to try something and uh, we'll make a video to try and let people know what's going on. So we got the kit about eight weeks ago and uh, didn't really start at the first few weeks family stuff. So we're about five or six weeks into what I would call actually hands-on doing some work. And so let me flip this around if I can do it. And I'll give you a tour of where we are to right now. Okay, so I can't get far enough back from it. Uh, just to give you an overview. So we're building in what we call the barn, which is either a small barn or a very large garage as it should be. And this is where we stand after about, what do we say, five or six weeks of work. That, which you'll see from time to time, was in a, uh, an airplane I was playing around with just for fun with my dad as a project. So I'm going to go back downstairs. I'm in the loft part of the building. And, well, there's bear hawk everywhere. And uh, you'll see a few stints and parts mixed into it. It's another story. So let me go down and show you kind of specifically where we're at and what we've done. And a couple things we've tried that we didn't see that may or may not be helpful to another builder. So as I said, there's bear hawk everywhere. So this is under the loft where I was standing in the opening shot. And you can see we've got our wings hung up out of the way. We're starting with a fuselage as many people do. And to give you an idea, this is kind of our shop. It's roughly a thousand square feet on the ground floor. And we have probably better than average toys for a builder. Um, my background's in design and engineering. Jill is a chemical engineer. We owned a small manufacturing company where we built land sailors and ice boats and other stuff. So let's go up and tour the kit. So what we've done, we've got the gear legs together and the struts together. And thank you very much, Ken F. That was a very useful video tutorial. And we then went from there and we've got the tail wheel on the back. So we bought, we're doing an eight inch tail wheel. And we have what we called the low hanging fruit kind of started. So I've got part of the trim up and we've got uh, our, our rudder pedals and brakes kind of installed and fuel valve floor. Uh, Sticks. Stick, control sticks and our flap handle. Um, the floor we did, because we have the stuff around to do it, um, we felt the floor vibrated a little bit. So if you look, you can see I used a bead roller and we rolled in 3 8 inch beads to help stiffen it a little bit. I don't know that it was really necessary. We have the stuff to do it. It was not a big deal. It took us a relatively short time. Seems to have helped a little bit. And we also used the bead roller. You can see I put a little lip on each of the overlapping panels so that as we screw them down, they'll tend to want to pull tight and not leave any gaps. Uh, the plan for finishing the floor at this point is most likely we're going to powder coat it because, well, that monstrosity in the corner is a huge powder coating oven that I used to use when we built land sailors. So, it's a nice yeah, there's there's one of the small models up hung up on the, on the window up there. But anyway, so we have the ability to do it in-house. We've had the seats in and out there in here right now just to keep some parts off the floor. And the rest of the low-hanging fruit, we've got a couple of the stringers on. Did that with my dad one day, looking for a project for him. He's getting up there. And we were looking for something simple. And we've got our elevators, although we haven't done the connections yet. We've got the horizontal tail and the elevators in place. Uh, nothing's really bolted together beyond bolting them on and, and the struts and all that kind of stuff just to, to fit it and see where we're going. So 
something yeah. that you did a little different. Um, I'm not sure about most people, but a big deal to me is going to be maintenance. So there are a few panels of the floor we identified as being critical if you've got a bad back and you do not want to have to stay laid down under the airplane oh. working on stuff. So that would be this front section, this section, and the two under the seats. And so we've gone to some pains to make sure that we can get those out very, very quickly um, so that a lot of maintenance items we meet, might need to get to are actually going to be on top of the floor. So stuff we did differently. Uh, I don't know if this is different. I'm sure somebody else has done this, but we're trying to figure out the other day how to, how to set up to figure out how long our brake hoses and stuff needed to be. And I had a roll of cheap, probably from Lowe's or Home Depot, vinyl tubing around I was using for a water level uh, when we were residing this building a, a year or two ago. So it probably was 10 bucks for a pack. And lo and behold, it nicely fits over the AM fittings that were going into the brakes. So we were able to pre-cut this and try these on for length. And so somebody, especially if you're, you're going to out someplace to have hoses made and need to know how long, um, that's a cheap way of maybe figuring out how long a hose run you need. Um, so these are, will be replaced obviously by brake lines, but they're just for now to give us an idea of size. Probably the only other thing that I can say that we did differently has to do with how we held the floor down. Um, we actually opted not to use any kind of uh, tinnerman or other fastening, and we opted to go with a high-grade uh, toothed riv nut in the steel tabs. Now, we've here's the deal with riv nuts. We've used these in our construction for a long time, and so the riv nuts we put in are heavily toothed. Um, steel CAD coated riv nuts um, and the only way you can turn them is to get a large vice grip on them and really wang on them. I have never had very good luck although I've used them in other other stuff we manufacture. I've never had good luck in using them in thin aluminum. And there are specialty keyed riv nuts you probably could use, but since I don't have access to the dies for them easily, and usually they're on parts that you can't stick under a small press anyway, um, I think you need to be very cautious where you use them. However, under the floor was a really, really good place for them. Those are fairly thick steel tabs. We can get them down tight. And I'm just gonna take a minute for those people unfamiliar with it and show you how we put those in. Okay, so I've got a little quick demonstration of how to do some rib nut, to put a rib nut in. You guys could make your own decision. You may find it useful for something down the road. Uh, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about the tool I built. Um, you can buy these for like 40 or 50 bucks. I think ATS sells them, probably a couple of other people. Um, McMaster Car, which is where we got the rib nuts from, uh, sell these tools, but uh, well, I'm a home builder cheap and I got a lot of tools at my disposal. So my solution was home built. So let's take a look at that for doing the installation. Like say, I can't take credit for this. I hadn't really thought about it. So my, my tool for doing this was pretty simple. One and three bolt, which is the same thread. This was a piece of steel tube I had around and I needed, I, I'm not looking for the bolt to thread in, but I, I had some nuts that were close. And so honestly, uh, all right, I took the cheap way out. I just drove them in. I have a hydraulic press and I just pressed them into the ends of the tube and they are not moving. But all they are is a bearing. I drilled them out and they're just bearing for the AM3 bolt that you can see here. I needed a bolt. I've got a washer on there. That washer is oiled because it is a bushing. And then on the other end, I have a couple more washers and they're both setting, setting the depth and you can see they're all oily as well. Lubrication is everything. And they help set the depth on the rib nut for when I put it in place. So this is a rib nut here. These were uh, CAD coated steel 
They should last a good long time. And I've got that screwed on there. To hold this, you could weld a handle on it. But then you're stuck with a handle. I'm just going to put that there. So my solution is a set of these vice grips. They allowed me to grab it from any number of angles if I was in a corner. So let me get this in the vice grip. Hopefully over these vlogs I'll get better at filming and, and talking. But anyway, just in there to hold it. And that brings me down to the other key. You could drive these with a 7 16 wrench. Or you could use my favorite tool lately, which is my electric impact wrench. But you could do this with a socket or even a, a box end or open end wrench. Um, however, uh, this made it much easier. Just as a sample, uh, this piece of steel, it's about the same, same thickness as the tabs that were welded on the airplane, maybe a hair thicker, but this is for demo. I've drilled it out, I think it was 1964 spit, so I piloted it, then drilled it out with the 1964s, deburred it, and now we're ready to put our rib nut in. And so I'm gonna get Jill to hold this because I'm gonna need both hands since uh, Wonder Dog is sleeping at my feet here, not contributing much. All right, you got it? Mm -hmm. Go to where you can film both sides of the drawing. And so I'm just gonna come in here and we're gonna drive this up tight. I've got it down and flush to my surface. And you should see on this side, you should see it beginning to crimp. Take a look at it. That's, that's well crimped. Shot my washers off. Anyway, what we have is, whoops, sorry, a nicely crimped, okay, technical difficulties. Anyway, so this is, I may have over crimped this slightly, but that's what that rib nut looks like. Get a picture right from the edge. Stop moving it. All right. You're not focusing? Now it's focused. All right. These are kind of not very fond of these vice grips. But even if I grab this down here and I get it quite tight, I can't turn that. Okay, so if everything goes right, when you've got your rib nut installed, you have a nice secure threaded fastening. In this case, this is 1032. On the airplane, this is the next morning we opened it up. Hopefully you can see that in there. Uh, there we go. So you can see the rib nut with screws sticking out of it, and we use those on tabs all over for mounting the floor. Uh, the, the rib nut's probably not as secure as a nut plate would be. It is, however, a lot faster. And again, we don't see these as heavily stressed screws. Nobody's going to be getting in there with an impact wrench and driving into them. At any rate, uh, so we owned a 1083 uh, Stinson station wagon. We've been able to save a few bits and bobs off that. Most notably, let's see, coming over here, there are the, there they are. There are the uh, wheels. We brought those home, stripped them, uh, walnut blasted them, primed them with etching primer, and we uh, did a very home builder thing. Those are actually refinished with uh, commercially available rim paint. We've used it on some other vehicles. It seems to hold up pretty well in the Chicago snow, so I have no reason to believe it won't hold up just fine uh, on our airplane, which is hangered, and we tend not to run through the salted streets of Chicago. And we were also able to save the calipers. Same deal, stripped, walnut blasted, cleaned up, cleaned out, cleaned the bore out, new O-ring, new pads. I don't know if you can see them in there, riveted in. And uh, we reckon this saved us about $3,000. You'll probably see a few other parts along the way for the build, stuff that we took off the Stinson that we were able to reuse. Uh, at least uh, we're parting it up. We're certainly not gonna get the money uh, out of it we had into it, but at least minimize our loss a little bit. A couple thing, other things about the project itself. 
We're replacing a 108-3. The Bearhawk has some incredible stole and, and backcountry capabilities. We really don't do that kind of flying. Uh, the airplane is going to be powered by a constant speed prop attached to an IO360 wide deck. Uh, you already saw the tires, the 7600s or 706s rather, that allow us, we've used those on pretty rough runways. Uh, grass runways, but uh, I don't want to go up in size and start to put a lot of drag on the airplane. So we're going to be paying a good deal of attention to two things in this build. One is trying to keep the airplane relatively aerodynamically clean and efficient. So no monster tires, at least for us, nothing wrong with that, just doesn't suit our mission. And uh, the other thing is going to be maintainability. I have an old back injury and uh, it is, as I've gotten older, it's uh, raised its ugly head. And so lots of attention is being paid to how simple can we make it to get to internal components, preferably without me being involved in some contortionist position under the panel. Uh, my back doesn't allow me to do that for long periods of time anymore. And so we're gonna spend some time looking at that uh, end of things. At any rate, I hope you found this first video helpful. Uh, we're going to try and make these every four to six weeks, or if we do something interesting, we'll try and come up, may come up with a video in between. So it, uh, we've been following the other video logs online. Thanks, guys. They've been very, very helpful. I hope we'll be contributing to that knowledge. And so please feel free, free to follow along or make comments below. I'll do my best to answer them and we'll see you in a few weeks.